Welcome back. It's your boy, Alex Coons. We're sitting here at Hot Tongue Pizza, and you know the deal. I'm here to bring you a brand new episode of Pie to Pie. This one with Mike and Liz from Fiorelli Woodfire Pizza. Mike and Liz are no strangers to the restaurant industry. They decided it was time to step out on their own. They tried and they succeeded in raising a ton of funds for their own concept, but before pulling the trigger, decided there was too many cooks in that kitchen and they stopped. They regrouped and realized, you know what I wanna do? I wanna buy a wood-fired oven, panel it with pool tiles, and cook in a garden in Venice. And that's exactly what they're doing. We talk about their journey and how they landed a permanent residency in the Cook's Garden, which is a garden located down in beautiful Venice. The Cook's Garden is a community garden that grows for bartenders and restaurants and now is growing Mike and Liz's career. It's a beautiful outdoor venue, a couple picnic tables, cooking underneath the stars with some lilacs and lilies. There's really nothing like it. In this episode, we talk about kitchen culture, we talked about human resources, and of course, we talked about Mike's starring role on Entourage. It was a great conversation filled with a lot of gems of their journey, where they're at right now, and where they are going. I loved every second of it. Mike and Liz, thank you so much. I hope you enjoy this episode. Vicente Fernandez forever. Let's go. Before we start the pod, I want to shout out our sponsor, Zabs. Zabs is incredible. Both their hot sauce sit on every table at Hot Tongue. Their St. Augustine and original are mind bending. I'm talking naturally sweet heat and their signature slow burn. They got this secret pepper from Florida called the Dot Teal. It is hot, it is sweet, it is perfect on pizza, on eggs, on anything. And I know that anyone who tries it is gonna love it. If you don't know about Zaps, you gotta check them out. And you know who put me on their hot honey, which I think is better than all of them? Nick Camacho. Shout out the man, the myth, and the legend for putting me on this. I didn't even like hot honey before this, but Zabs changed my mind. I wouldn't put it on every table at Hot Tongue if I didn't believe in how much it could enhance pizza. Do yourself a favor and go check out Zabs. You will not be disappointed. Anyways, I'll stop talking now. Let's get to the pod. Let's go. We picked the tile and the color and all that stuff and we had a sink put on. Yeah, we, definitely it was custom because the way he was building them, I was like, this is so not functional. Yeah. And he was telling me like, now the way we built ours, he's building them because he was saying, it's very rare that a, I'm like a restaurant chef or was a restaurant chef. So he's like, it's very rare that a restaurant chef comes through and buys a mobile oven. So I was telling him, I'm like, I want this to be set up like I would set it up in a in mm. a restaurant. Like the, a line. the way they had it set up was the, he had the refrigeration like here and the oven was over there. So you had to like build the pizza, put it on the peel, walk it over to the oven and put it in. And I was like, why don't you just make it L so I can, so I don't have to move. And he was like, oh, that's brilliant. Simple stuff that we, that yeah. we know. So no plan. You just uh, one day woke up and you said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy a pizza trailer. So we raised money to, we were raising money her and I to open a restaurant. And we, we were able to raise like a couple million dollars. And then okay. it came with a lot of um, compromise, I would say, opinions. Yes. No, but we, we sure. raised we were able to raise a couple million dollars, um, which was uh, happened fairly quickly. We had a lot of support, but it came with a lot of, um, you know, opinions. You know, a lot of people, those people that were lending us money, rightfully so, had, had, had a lot of opinions. Um, and we just felt, we started to feel a little bit powerless. So one day she would, Liz was saying to me like, you know, what do we really want to do? Let's think about what we really want to do. And, it, and it's not have some big fancy restaurant in Hollywood. It's, you know, cook food that we like and cook for people that we like and work together and do something we're proud of. And, uh, you know, the conversation was never like, oh, let's raise a millions of dollars and open some big fancy restaurant. It just kind of went in that direction. So we, we backed up. And she said, let's do something we can control. We, let's do something we can own all of, control it ourselves, just put our money together um, and we'll just open a small little restaurant. And that was like, then the reality hit that we had absolutely no money and we were like, well, that's not an option. So we're like, she was like, let's do a food truck. And then we kind of looked into that. Now that was also too much 
too expensive for us. When we looked into like the way we'd want to do it, food trucks can be pretty, can get pretty, I mean, relatively speaking, pricey. Yeah, but well, so did you give the millions of dollars back? We never actually took, took it. the we, money. You so had raised it, and we were then you crossing didn't the bridge it. where okay. it was time to like, got it. let's get this money in the bank and, and it, figure it, out how it. we're going to distribute it. Okay, and that's when we were like, uh, maybe no, this thanks. isn't maybe this yeah. isn't the right time okay. right now okay. or, or the right climate. And when we and we like the we like the people. We'll pro- hopefully maybe revisit with them in the future. But it's nice. Just what was getting, the concept that you wanted to do? Like a neighborhood Italian spot. Yeah, with like just great food, great service. Um, I mean, pizza was always on the table. Pizza was always on the table. Yeah, pizza, pizza table. would be a part of the concept for sure. I, I come from like, I think we both come from kind of finer dining mm-hmm. restaurants. And the the idea was like, let's get back to just being happy and, and doing what, what got us what got us into this business or what got us kind of hooked on this business Yeah. rather than just serving people. I, it got to the point where I was working in restaurants that I wouldn't go to. Yeah. You know? Not because they weren't great restaurants, but just... Not my vibe. Right? Yeah, yeah. You aren't going to pay like yeah, you're $55 not gonna, for a piece of asparagus. Yeah, yeah and a $100 check sandwich. average. Yeah. People get dressed up to go. There's, yeah. a, there's a DJ in the dining room. I mean, I love, She's I love an experience, like but I do understand that because it's it takes away from the hospitality a little bit too. I feel like for me specifically, I grew up in restaurants mm. and then it just kind of turned into what my life was. And it was early on while I was like serving and just like a floor manager. Part of what made me love being in hospitality was the fact that I recognized the people and it was fun to talk to them and connect with them. And you get to a point where you're not happy, to not that you're not happy, but it's almost like you're scared that are we dropping off the food right? Is it? There's so many more steps and red tape on it than, yeah. than just the actual connection. So I wanted to get back to that. And this just kind of felt more authentic to me mm-hmm. to do something that was closer like that. Yeah. I mean, I drifted away hard from hospitality, even though I'm still in it. Yeah. COVID kind of pushed me. Where I was like, oh, I'm gonna take a, a back seat and I'll do more admin HR stuff so I could have more of a regular life. Yeah. And it quickly turned into that's not what I wanna do. Yeah. So this idea grew more and more into we wanna see the people, we wanna be able to connect. Yeah. Well, so. a lot of a lot of people then uh left the restaurant industry, I think, after COVID. They probably they're like, man, the fuck that place. There's a lot of <laughs> yeah. abuse and toxicity. And <laughs> there, fuck, there I just is, got this yeah. tech job and like, what was I doing? So there was kind of like a, a like a reset there, yeah. which was like I think really good for the industry because good and bad. I mean, in however way you look at it, but you gotta you know now you gotta pay a little bit more. People gotta be treated a bit more like better, and it's it's you you get a you get a better team I think because of it because that that workforce slimmed down quite a bit after COVID. Well, now the people in it want to be in it because everybody had a chance to get out. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think, I mean, Liz just told a very romantic story, but like for me, I, like, I just don't know how to do anything else. So I think after COVID or going, going through COVID, so I, we were in a unique situation where we were working for a company that was thriving and we were doing it and we were just getting beat up. Like we got killed and it got to the point where I was like, what am I doing? Like, yeah. why am I doing this? For what? Like, you know, what is, so it was like, do I want to keep working for someone else or do I want to do something for myself? And uh-huh. I think I'm, I would say I'm, I've, I have less money than I've had probably than I can remember in my adult life, but uh, I'm happier than I, I've ever been. So you start to, as you age too, you, you, you get older, you think about what's really important to you Yeah. and money gets finances, we get, get, you know, obviously we want to be able to live life and, and pay our bills, but the financial part of it gets lower and lower on that list. Yeah, well, we, I think we like all underestimate time, you know, and how much time we spend on things, and that's when like the, that's you start valuing that currency more than than the than the money. That's oh, the only currency you can't get back, right? Yeah, you can always get money and people too, like just being able to connect with 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 you today. And, yeah, and like that's more and more important to me. Like when if you're leaving somewhere feeling enriched, you yeah, know, like oh, I get to go hang out with those guys at Hot Tongue and and talk pizza and life and stuff like that. And like, what a great 
you know, addition to my day that was. You feel yeah. be- you feel better having done it, you know. So no, I agree, and that's like something you can take for the like rest of your life. We could you could say something, and it could affect me for the next three weeks. You know, if I can get like a pair of pants off Amazon, and I'll be excited for fifteen seconds. I actually probably wouldn't be excited at all because I don't give a shit about clothes. But uh, you know, no, I do. Th- I do think you're right. I think that's what got us here, and I I think there was a plan an ambiguous plan because we want, we knew what we wanted to get out of it. Yeah. And we knew what we wanted to do conceptually, Yeah, (laughs) but not, um, it did turn into something very different and challenging. I mean, this is for us coming from restaurants where you have so many people on board and so many people are in charge of so many different things and you underestimate how much, It really is a team effort. And here it's just me and him trying to, you know, figure it out. And the figuring out part is hard. Of course. And this is something that we've never done. So it's some things completely that we have no idea how Mm -hmm. to start from trying to permit to how do we store things? Well, it's totally different than everything you know, right? If you walked out of here today and threw me the keys and told me to flip the concept and turn this into another restaurant, I'd be open in two weeks. No problem. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, not guaranteeing there'd be people walking in the door, but <laughs> I can, I can, I can yeah. get it up and running. Yeah. yeah you know, you what, know what I mean? Um, but then tell me, like, get a mobile oven and throw it in the middle of, of a garden in Venice Beach and and see how that works out. It's like there's some, been some curveballs and challenges that I definitely didn't expect, you know? For sure. Um, uh, that I should have. Now, in hindsight, I'm like, how did I not see this coming? Yeah, well, that's always how it is. <laughs> you know, yeah. like I thought this would be so easy. And that's what people think, too. They're like, oh, you just, so you guys just like show up and cook. Like they think the, the, the mise en place just magically appears. And, well, you pe- know, the, the, people think crazy. They're like, oh, shit. you must be <laughs> they, they, People so, just think magic, like it's, it's just it's, a Harry Potter situation. It's, You're like, it's wild. Explosion is set up. Yeah. You know, and it's like, <laughs> yeah, they don't see, you know. When I'm like, uh, you know, we're working more than we did in, in the restaurants, actually. And they're like, well, what do you do all day? I'm like, I just fucking. Nothing. Just hang around. Wait, wait to open. Wait for you to walk in. Uh-huh. You know? Yeah, no, I, I remember like talking to i was talking to nick camacho lucky nicks and it's like you know you might only have one pop-up or any like or two pop-ups during the week but it's like he goes he he goes in and kind of explained to me like what he was doing for like he's working every single fucking day yeah for sure like and then the the second one he the second the second one starts and it's kind of like the process starts all over again so the product and he's doing it all by himself so it's like you know it's I mean, he's not doing it, all the prep work. It seemed like uh, it was all by himself, but it's right. like that, that's all the shit that no one sees. You know, yeah, it's we're, like we're oh, just, we'll start, we have no we'll, employees. We'll start a pop up, and it's gonna crush, and it's gonna be <laughs> right. super easy. And right. I think a lot of brick and mortar owners, like have, that have never used these ovens or you know ever popped up anywhere too, I think that they are kind of just like, oh, I should have done this. You know, popping up so easy. There's no overhead and blah blah blah. But it's like, yo. It's fucking work. Oh, it's a grind. We did an event recently with the the, the guys um, at Amigo More, and there it's a restaurant. And where, where are they in Highland Park? Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, but sorry, but uh, they they started as a pop up. They had a pop up for years, and now they have a restaurant that se- seemingly very. Is that the, the thr- Italian? Yeah, yeah, Italian Mexican fusion. Yeah. 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 So uh-huh. I had never met them. Great people, super nice, and so we, nice. we shared a booth with them at this industry event, and we were making pizzas and a gosni, and they were making empanadas, I think. A, like a pizza empanada. Yeah, Mexican Italian. Fire. But I started talking to them, and I said, "Wait, let me. I want to ask you a question. And answer me honestly. When you had a pop up, how often did you say to yourself, like, fuck this? I wish we just had a." a regular restaurant and she was like every fucking day and i was like now that you have a restaurant how often do you guys say to each other fuck this i wish we were just still doing the pop-up she said every fucking day. yeah so it's like the grass is always green yeah, you know yeah. and i knew that was going to be the answer i assumed anywhere um you know she was like not a day goes by where we don't just say i wish we were just still doing the pop different challenges right yeah for us though the chat is like I, I understand how to handle restaurant challenges the pop-up you know mobile challenges or something totally out of my scope of understanding so well we have to do major rewiring because we of our brains of our brains because it's we're used to doing it like a restaurant so much even when he's talking about like menu and prep and i'm like well we're not 
we can't look at it like that. We have to be very practical. And me as well, it's kind of like, oh, no, that's how I would do it. But what do I need to do now? Yeah. And like when you wanted to make bread. <laughs> I was like, we should, we're going to serve sandwiches on the menu. She's like, oh, I always wanted to make sourdough. I'm going to. I'm gonna make uh, I'm gonna make sourdough bread. We're not gonna sell that much. I could probably do it in my apartment. I was Every like, sweet. Day. I sent her one video. She's like, so bump and grandmas? Is that what we're gonna go with? Like, yup. Yeah. It's uh, like you gotta fold. There. You gotta fold every every so often. I was like, yeah, I'm not. Yeah, yeah. I was like, so you're gonna be getting up at like two or three in the morning. Starter. We want to sell twice a day. Yeah. yeah, we'll just we'll just do some yeah, sandwiches. And listen, I can't keep a plant alive. I don't know. I can no, keep a yeah. starter no, I mean, alive. To this day, it, I'm like, how's your home bakery going? Yeah. It's, every day. That shit ain't easy. How's Panaderia Gutierrez working out for you? <laughs> Yeah, we'll just do some casual sourdough. Yeah. There's really yeah. no yeah. such like, thing. Oh, I was like, super yeah, cool. it's a pain in the <laughs> ass. Yeah. Uh, so we chose we chose the pizza oven basically because we want to get back to fun. Yeah, we want to get back we to fun. Get back I mean, to yourselves, and is so is this kind of like a stepping stone though to take this concept into a brick and mortar? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, of course. I think that's yeah. the ultimate goal. I would love. Personally, and I don't know that we've had this conversation at, at length, but I would love to have a That's couple. That's good. We can have it right now. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> a business And whatever session. we say right here. <laughs> yes, that's right. The business well, plan is being <laughs> written in stone. I would love to have a one more oven and do events mm -hmm. and maybe have them activated, but have a brick and mortar and that be the restaurant and I would, I mean, the dream is to have been multiple. Yeah. But I do think that there's something in the mobile pizza that it's been untapped and now it's, you know, everybody did the taco trucks and everybody did that, but I do think there's something special. Yeah. And the community is amazing. Yeah. I mean, we, I think we have a multi-layered plan. Our first plan is to kind of replace our, not replace ourselves, but it's just her and I working. So uh -huh. like the first goal is to get, be busy enough where we can hire staff, mm -hmm. you know, at least a, an employee. Um, and then eventually I think get into a brick and mortar. And for me, as I see it, I would like to have a few of those, but also I like the mobile. Dude, I work with this guy. You seen Ilios mm -hmm. out here? Yeah. So when he started, we, I was working, we were working together. Oh, like nice. he was working, we were, we were sharing a, we weren't working directly together, but we were working at this ho uh, hotel during COVID. We were popping up and he was using it as a prep kitchen. And I watched that kid grow from like carrying a wood oven to the, you know, on the back of a pickup truck to, to where he's at now. And it was like, I mean, unbelievable. The response was just unbelievable. Yeah. To, so that, I think that kind of, I mean, put it in my head anyway. I was like, if the response of this kid, I mean, he wasn't even, he came in one day. And he, he was telling me what he was doing and we were talking and I was like, what are you charging? And he like showed me his menu. I was like, raise your prices immediately. And I was like $12. Like, for yeah. Like, I think he was like 10 at the man. time. And then I was like, what do you serve for, you know, drinks? And he was like, I don't have, I'm not serving any beverages. And I was like, Dude, Coke, Diet Coke, water, Sprite, like today. Then we started, I, we started. I think that was part of like how, how he got, he got on so hard though, because it's like, you yeah. could, it, his prices, like his price point was part of the story because you could go and you, it wasn't pretentious. It was nothing. Yep. And then you're getting this fucking elevated pizza on the street for 10 bucks. And it was like, fuck dude, the dude was selling out. There was lines like, dude, he it came, was crazy. He came in one day and he was like, Hey, can I use some walk-in space? Cause he was like prepping in his house. Yeah. Oh, somebody's house. Have you seen like the vice? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Immediately I watched it. And so he, when that space got too small, he came to us and said, um, can I, share some walk-in space with you guys. He was already paying a little bit for the prep kitchen. We were like, yeah, absolutely. This dude came in with like 10, 12 cases of mushrooms, like 15 cases of fresh mozzarella, like 12 cases of canned tomatoes. And I was like, oh man, this guy doesn't know how to order. And like, what? I was like, dude, how many pizzas are you gonna sell today? He's like, oh, like 250, 300 probably. I was like, what <laughs> the fuck am I doing with my life? Yeah. Like, holy shit. Yeah. And that's when we were like, we started making him cookies. I don't know if he still does these chocolate chip cookies, but we were making them for him because we were so, we were rooting so hard for this guy. We're like, dude, you got to have something sweet because people were now popping up next to him. He's like, oh, there's a chicken wing place on the other side of me. And there's a dessert place that popped up on the other side of me. And I was like, dude, you got to take that business. Um, but I think that 
was a, not I think I know that was a very inspiring story for me personally and how watching him do that and how the guy the, the kid was just like fucking no fear I'd never seen anything like it because pizza is as really actually always kind of been a street food from the beginning of yeah. the time but uh, you know you do think of like taco stands in Los Angeles that are just like straight gas and like but to, to have him have that oven on the back of the pickup truck and he's the flames open and it's like a lot of people are doing it now you can go right. outside a bar and there's a wood-fired oven yeah. but he was one of the first people i'd yeah. ever saw do do it in los angeles yeah me too i mean i think he's probably the reason dude i just saw this guy what's his name justin smile or uh he's he's like a michelin star chef in new york left all of his restaurants and is doing like mobile pizza pop-ups well i was gonna ask you like why that what what it, because I've talked to a lot of like chefy dudes who have kind of like made this transition themselves. And is it like pizza is, I say pizza is the, 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 the easiest hard thing to do, you know? I say it all the time. It's, uh, it's that simple and it's that difficult. But, uh, but like, what is the attraction to pizza? coming from like an, like the kitchens that you have? Like you could have done, there could have been multiple concepts, you know? Is it, is it because it's easy to do? No, I think the opposite. I think because people think it's easy to do. It's like one of those things where it's like everybody's using the same, you know, five ingredients, yeah. but, it, but it's, it's really, I find it as a, such a great outlet. It's an extension of you as a cook. Um, I mean, there's so many variables in pizza. Everybody does it differently. And it's really like, when I think about like what, what attracts me to cooking and what I want to get back to, like you really have to be in it, right? You're like touching the dough, you're feeling it. It's different every day. You 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 put the pizza in the oven. You you it reacts differently, or you know, depending on where you how you move it. And it's like really, um, it's just beautiful. It's it's beautiful. I, I hate to go as far as to say it's like an art. What I do is in an art, but I think there's some guys that cook pizza that that you could you could say it's an art form. I would say you know pizza is definitely an art form. I mean, any food can be art form. I mean, like it, the presentation of something, especially a pizza, the colors that you get, you know, red, white, and green on like a caramelized crust, you know, there it's really pretty. And if you're intentional about everything that you do, intention, uh, then every fucking pizza that comes out of the oven can be a masterpiece. You right. know, if it's, if it is orchestrated and it is topped in a way that looks pretty and it, it should be. And so, Go ahead. Yeah, like when I pull a pizza out of the oven, like every time I look at it, like almost too long where she's like, get it out fucking hot. You know what I mean? And I'm like staring at it. I'm like, look at this. Like, oh my God. I'm like touching it. Other people's food, right? I should yeah. probably just put it in the box. and Licking it. Say, yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> it's, it's beautiful. beautiful. <laughs> it's a good one. All right. Uh, yeah. Do you want me to cut it in yeah. a six or eight? <laughs> he does this thing and I've noticed, I find it funny. He picks up every pie he makes and looks the booty shot at the bottom, I look at the bottom. Yeah, you want to see <laughs> every you know? single yeah. time that day it's, that we were I want to see what the bottom looks like yeah. you know like the day everyone we, but the day we were at the yeah, event just, people were literally like standing like waiting, waiting for, for pizza. pizza not because it's great pizza because we were the first <laughs> booth there and like they're walking in hungry and they're like oh pizza it's a good it's a she's I, like can I get a fucking pizza I'm like <laughs> uh, what's this dude doing is yeah. he okay <laughs> yeah. no I think it's a great pizza but I get it, yeah. When it's you, when you get into like you know more extensive high volume restaurants, you it at some point it, some of the conversation turns into you know I would say thirty percent if not more of the menu is not something that inspires you. It's something that okay, what do what do the guests want? We have to have something for you know people who love steak. So there's a steak section on the menu, and then obviously there's you know the vegan. So we have to have a kind of little, little vegan area or vegetarian, and then. Um, what about, you know, what about, you know, oh, we have to, have, we're in LA, we have to have pasta, like, and you wind up doing all of these things because, because. Yeah. So you're putting food in the window that maybe you're not so inspired by. When I take a pizza out of the, again, it was COVID. We wound up popping up at this hotel and the hotel had a wood oven. And I was like, I want to put pizza on the menu. Um, and no one else wanted to, but I did it anyway. And I wound up just kind of burying myself in that corner where there was a wood oven and making pizzas. And that was like my escape every day would be to, when service came around, like, you know, the first like five or 10 pizzas, I would just make them myself and felt so good to be able to escape and just bury myself in, in pizza. And it's, so it's, 
it's something you feel good about all the time. It's very, for, for me, it's very inspiring. I grew up with pizza as a culture in New yeah. York on Long Island. Is like Friday night was pizza night. We had the two pizzerias that we went to. One ter- Brothers Four, we got Sicilian pies, and Michelangelo's, we got the round pies. And you know, it's just very nostalgic for me. Like everything about pizza is amazing. Um, and it's also if you want to sell other things to to fuel your creative outlet, which I do. I mean, sell pizza because that's going to get people there to try the other stuff you might have. There's not like another medium too where you can get like, you can get so creative on a bed of bread, you know? I mean, anything, you can call anything pizza. I am not a traditionalist in in any fucking form, but it's crazy how creative you can get with a disc of dough, you know, and what you can do with that. We're starting with like what five pizzas on our menu and our inventory was like, she's like, you have to cut down the inventory because like every pizza is totally different. And you know, it was like, it looked like a, a full, an inventory of a full restaurant. So I'm like working on scaling that back. But like you're saying to your point, there's so much, so many different things you can do with, with pizza. You know, one, one pizza has got five or six ingredients on it that we're not using anywhere else. It's like, oh shit. Like, the, 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 the thing in Hot Tongue is when we started off, we were obviously all vegan, but we started off with six pies and, and that was intentional. We have, we now, and now looks like we have six vegan pies and six like other pies, non vegan pies, but really they're all remixes of each other. You know what I mean? Like the the toppings remain all the same and you're looking at 12 pizzas, but really it's, it's like the same combination of, of five toppings. And I think that like that is really important. You also touched on, uh, like when you have to build a menu, probably for like those bigger restaurants, you know, you need a steak section, you need a vegetarian section, right. you need all this shit. Mm-hmm. But like when you're running your own operation, it should definitely just be like whatever the fuck you want to put on there. And I would, I would really say never put anything on there that you think you have to put on there, you know? Right. Like you, do you have a vegan option? Nope. Yeah. And do that's you have been a gluten-free the most option? Se- nope. Yeah. And that's been the most, se- and it's not because I don't, value those things. I eat gluten-free pizza. I think I eat gluten-free pizza at prime all the time. I think yeah. it's fucking great. Yeah. Um, because it's the only one they serve smaller and I don't want a whole fucking square, but it's delicious. Um, but it's just the menu wasn't born out of, uh, kind of necessity to, to fill a niche. It was like, well, what do we want to cook? And I mean, we had a, at one point I'm like, I want to put a, I want to do a Supreme pizza. And she's like, well, we're not bringing in another meat. And I'm like, great. I'll call it the Supreme ish. <laughs> that's what it, that's how it wound up nice. on the menu. It's not actually a Supreme um, but it's kind of inspired by, um, and that's, I mean, you can, you can speak to that because you, she'll shut me down all the time and she's that's very, good. It's good well, to have she's very down. pragmatic and she's not a chef. So it's like, sometimes my ego can get a little ahead of me and she's like, no, that makes no sense. And I, tr- I think a big part of our partnership, why it's, uh, why it's so successful is that I trust when she tells me no, I'm like, okay. Ending up in Venice and having so many options, they have a lot of people mm-hmm. have asked us. Do you guys have gluten-free options? Yeah. Do you guys have dairy-free options? Ve- and vegetarian stuff. And he, I could see his wheels turning yeah. and really going down the roads of like, again, the conditioning of restaurants where yeah. you have to please everybody. Yeah. And I said to him, I was like, stop. We, ha- we can't do this. Mm-hmm. Where one, it's just you and I. Yeah. Two, what happens if we, best case scenario, we get so busy we can't manage all of this, yeah. just you and I. Yeah. And that's not what we were going to do. Yeah. And I mean, I know that it's difficult to, to not want to give people. Yeah, to say no, to basically turn right, money away. Especially when people are pushing that on you, right? When people yeah. are like, but they're going to ask for it. Yeah, but like you said, it's very important. And I told them recently, this is the only time that we're going to be able to do what we want to do. Mm-hmm. Because even once you open a restaurant, you're a little more tied to then get back into what's conventional. Even if it's yours, you have to see what, oh, this is not selling. Why am I attached to this dish? And it starts changing. Yeah. Where I feel like this is really a blank canvas for us to just move forward and do whatever we want yeah. and then change it along the way. Mm-hmm. But... It's hard. It's hard. Well, for me too, I've like, I've never been one of those chefs to, I'm not like one of like fuck gluten-free or fuck vegans. Like I, I respect 
those decisions. And like, I honestly, like, I don't know that our bodies were meant to process animal meat. Like I, sometimes I'm like, I should probably be <laughs> vegan too. Like, so I, I totally like, I don't ever want to come off as like, I don't respect your, your, your decision. At, you know what I mean? I want to accommodate, you just want to accommodate everybody. And, and it's not like, you know, that's, that's, I don't know. I, yeah, yeah, I guess like the problem is though, you can't accommodate everyone. No, you right. can't. And even trying to please people who want to be pleased, they can't be pleased either. And so you shoot yourself in the foot trying to appease the minority. So I think just stick with what you're doing. Right. Yeah, I appreciate that. Fuck appeasing the minority. People. You know, I, I looked at I looked at uh, some places that that like I really respect some some pizza makers and pizza restaurants. And I was like, are they doing gluten free now? Or I thought, are they doing vegan? Are they doing gluten free? Like specifically? And, and the answer was no, almost every time. Mm -hmm. um, and, but then we came here and we had the SOP slice and I was like, fuck, like, why can't we do this? Right? Like to me, like the vegan thing's part of my personal journey. I was vegan for like six years, vegetarian for 20. And like, it was, I think that the vegan, I think vegan food is like a lot is disgusting. I think it's gross. I think vegan cheese is nasty. Agree. And I think that. I was on more of a mission too. I love food so much. And it was more for me about how can we just make this food? Like, why does it have to be vegan food? Can it just be like, you know, Chinese or uh, Italian or like, mm -hmm. let's go to a vegan restaurant. Can we, could, we, could it just be a genre like, oh, like let's have a vegan meal tonight, you know, but you, no one thinks that way because usually it's just not that great. Uh, Unless like, you know, Crossroads I love. Have you ever been there? I haven't been, I but have. I know of it. Yeah, I, I, I love that restaurant. And don't get me wrong, Pira Vida, there's great restaurants mm -hmm. in Los Angeles. Ooh, we want the vegan meats. We want the vegan cheeses. Are people coming up to you and asking you, do you have vegan options? Do you have vegan meats? Well, guess what? A lot of them are not that good, but there is one that reigns superior and that is Beehive. Everything that they make at Beehive is levels ahead of what you can get in a grocery store. Their pepperoni, their crumbled sausage, their cheeses, there is no contest. And the owner is one of the coolest people I have ever met. They make incredible products that go on your pizza and it is dope plant food. That's what they call it and that's what it is. Beehive, the best. Look no further. It's Beehive, baby. Straight out of Nashville. Good people, great product. Check them out. But that's part of my personal journey. And then like with gluten-free too, like hit, uh, Matt's wife is gluten-free and I worked with her for a really long time and it was important to be like, okay, like I saw what other people are doing and I was like, I wanna make this as, as it's like a challenge. I'm like such a, like a, you know how Michael Jordan would just like, the, you you would challenge him or say he couldn't do something and so he'd give you two fucking middle yeah. fingers and say, watch this, like that's, when somebody tells me I can't do something, that's when it's like, okay, watch me, motherfucker. Like, I will make a better vegan pizza than any pizzeria you have in your, like any pizza you have in a restaurant. Or like, you can't make good vegan ranch. Like the challenge there was really fun, right? But like, you, you still have to appeal to a whole nother market, you know? Right. That's why we're not all vegan anymore. You know, I, I could make the I best, I could make that. the best vegan pizza in the world. I could think personally that it was better than X, Y, and Z's pizza down the street. But yours is. Thank well, you. In our experience, right? But you okay. cannot, you cannot get somebody that doesn't eat vegan to come eat vegan. Mm -hmm. Like if you love cheese and you love meat, that's where you're going. That's what right. you're gonna eat. That's but familiar. When we had that slice, so we came in here, just randomly grabbed a couple slices. We were kind of in a rush and and uh I didn't realize she ordered for herself and I ordered for myself, and I took a bite of her pizza. And then she mentioned said something about she doesn't do well with dairy. I don't know if it's an allergy or it's you know, an allergy. yeah, she has a dairy allergy. Yeah. So I was like, oh, it's fucking great. Like, let me get another bite. And she was like, I would eat this all the time because it doesn't have cheese. And I was like, what? And then she's like, this is one of the vegan slices. And I was like, no way. And it was like, let me get another bite of that. And it was like, like I would have never guessed that yeah. that was a vegan slice. But it, it was comes, so good. It comes back to making food that you yourself want to eat. Exactly, that you would eat every day. Mm -hmm. you know? Because if, if you make that food that you want to eat, you will find that people that enjoy that same thing. Yeah, and yeah, agreed. Like you said, why can't it just be food? Why yeah. does it have to be labeled? Yeah. And I agree with that because if people tried, if people allowed themselves to try something 
without the stigma of it's going to be bad. Yeah. They would see, oh, it's not. Yeah. I, I could eat this as yes. a regular pizza. Uh-huh. This could be the way my mind goes. Um, but I do think you have to stay true to what you want to eat. Yeah. And I think that's why it works for all of these smaller pizza businesses. Everybody's staying true to what they enjoy. And that's the difference between opening a full restaurant at the capacity that we have. Because we're not appealing to everybody. You're appealing to yourself and you're doing it for you to show people, look how good this can be. Yeah. And it's different. So I I, I think that that's a little bit of. I don't know that necessarily. I mean, yes and no, right? We don't necessarily want everybody. We always say it. If we cook food that we like, people like us will show up to eat it. Yep. When I say people like us, I mean like-minded people who are into the same things, into yeah. the same type of food, like cool, like, right? Just like, you know. Well, but- again. The same. Back people. That also sets you like only like appealing to like doing what you want also sets you apart from like everybody else. Because if like you start doing things you're, you feel like you're supposed to do, then you're just like everybody else. You know what I mean? Like right. you want people to come have your pizza the way that you want it. And that's what mm-hmm. sets you apart. And I think a lot of people sometimes miss that. You know what I mean? They're, they're just, I'm going to open up a pizza restaurant. I'm going to do all this shit. Oh, yeah. especially with pizza, right? Yeah. Like I, I mean, if if I if any like Italian pizzaiolo come and watched us make pizza, they'd be like, "You're doing everything wrong. Like everything you're doing is like not the way you're supposed to be doing it." And like some that used to kind of get in my head a little bit, but like now I'm like, I don't care. I the end product, I like it. Yeah. And that's all that matters to me. Yeah. And I, and I hope that other people will like it. I think they will. Dude, the shop is great. Thank you. I love. I was just saying, I'm like, this is a pizza shop. Like this is what I think. You know what I mean? Like yeah. this is like a neighborhood pizza spot where. Like I, you do all this branding and like, yeah, like- we had, uh, we had this company called Preen designed, designed, helped us design it. I mean, like they did all the, the mathematical work. I gave them like a file of like all these images from like Kanye West videos to Salvador Dali paintings to like uh, this. Oh, re- that's the. Well, this guy, this is uh, uh, that right? my favorite <laughs> artist, Della Delso. And he's like, it's very like. He, he it's hits, like, but it's like. It's like Warhol. It's like. De- yeah. It's like he's, he, he hits a lot of like contemporary artists. But uh, yeah, very fortunate. It was, uh, it's a labor of love. Thank you. It's, it's soft too. Like it's pop, but it's soft. Like as a girl, you know, when you walk into. Everyone the- says it's cute. You know, I was like, we, we opened a little cute, oh, cute I thought, pizza place. I thought it place. was like, cool. Like, this is, I feel like this is I'll something take you cute. see in New York. Yeah. Like, yeah. No, I mean, as a girl, I know some of my friends, I was like, it's, it's soft. It's not like, you don't walk in and it's like, you know, sometimes pizza, like. Pizza but I don't shop. want it to be like hard, you know, like it's fucking hard. I mean, usually we're playing some pretty soft music in here too. It's like Sade's playing. <laughs> Yeah, no, I think that's great. I think you want to appeal to that. I love that your shop doesn't exude toxic masculinity. <laughs> no, absolutely not. I always say, like, you know, I, I have, like, having, like, a female f- presence in a kitchen is so important. Oh. And, like, so many, this, like, a, this is a man, like, a male-dominated industry, too, the pizza community. It's, like, you go to Pizza Expo and just a bunch of fucking helmets. <laughs> yeah, it's like, a bunch of guys. how much for this cheese? Huh? It's like, uh, you know, uh, so I just like really like having any diversity in a kitchen is like really important. I'm going to tell great. you why I say that. There's a, there's a, pl- it's no longer there, but on across the street from the Reverly Center, there was a pizzeria that I love their pizza. It was like New York style, really crispy. And but it was a lot of guys, and they were all <laughs> creepy. Yeah, all creeps. Wow. <laughs> so what I would do is I would order and have my brother. I will take my brothers and go. I'm like, go pick up. And it always tasted better when you ate it there. Yeah. But I didn't want to sit in there. I was like, they'll come up to me and be like, oh, you enjoy your pizza? I was like, Dude, they nah. were touchy. Oh, my God. Yikes, dude. <laughs> hey, how's that slice tasting? Like, it was fucking creeps, dude. Oh, my God. What was the pizza? What was the place? <laughs> no. Oh, no way. And the guy would walk out and be like, you, you, can I get you anything else? I was like, no, thank you. No way. 
Wow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, I've worked in kitchens like that for sure. <laughs> and, and I feel like, too, in kitchens like that, or when you work at a restaurant that has, like, 15 dudes and one, like, person, like, one, one girl, female, and they're, like, front of house, like, I, the shit that would get, people would get away with, because, like, th this person might have to laugh off, like, a lot of fucked up yeah. shit. And it, that was, like, it was kind of the thing. And you look back, and I'm like, man, why didn't I ever say anything? And like, and t I didn't really even start. Be well, I would never actually said anything to anyone until I was an owner of a company and been like, "Yo, that's not fucking okay. Like, that's not funny." And everyone's just like, they hide behind, "Oh, I'm joking. Yeah. Oh, it's a joke." And it's like, dude, well, that's not a fucking funny joke. Like, you can't, you can't. Like, the minute somebody walks in, you can't be like, "Nice shorts." It's like, right? You don't. You didn't say that to me. And I just got these shorts from Amazon. Right. I, I, was I was excited, excited. for 15 was excited. seconds about these Yeah, and now shorts. I'm pissed because you didn't say anything about my shorts. And it's like, dude, I, I know like what's I know what's going on here. Right. Like, don't play fucking dumb. Yeah. yeah. So know? that's what I meant when I was like, it's soft. It feels good. Yeah. Good. I like oh. that. Because I, mean, that, I love that place. But it was like, you know. Yeah. I mean, I think anybody can appreciate that. I mean, I've been in situations where it's like, well, I have said something in the kitchen and people just don't get it. And I'm like, if if what you just said like offends me you know how hard i am to offend yeah you know, i think you know what yeah. i mean like that's that's wildly offensive even though you you think you're just you know you're gonna say you're complimenting somebody's shorts well you kitchen I mean? culture i think has changed like so, so much so much i mean so it, much. it has and thank god so much like a lot of that like a lot of that like yelling at somebody and uh mm -hmm. or like degrading somebody and then like being like oh it's, it's just because of the shift you know i used to be that i used to i'd say that too during like when it was like a friday night or it's like super busy catering order it's like listen like I, there's no time to be nice there's no time to be nice when it's busy you know it's like i'll apologize later and it's like mm -hmm. why why are you apologizing at all are you are do you have the emotional iq of a child that you cannot like be under pressure and be still be a nice person. Like that says something about you. If you, if like you use the excuse, it's busy to be an asshole. It's you know what I mean? Out. Yeah. And that, and this industry kind of like, I, it's how I came up and like, that's how Same. it, that's how it was. It was just like, it was okay. But like, it's not fucking okay. It's not okay in the kitchen. It's not okay on the sidewalk. It's not okay at home. It's not okay anywhere. Right. Well, we're also employing a whole different demographic 100%. of people. Yeah, that's very and true. And they will call you out. Y yes, in, in person or on social media. Yeah. They don't, and I- Or in a court of law. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, yes, no, it's, it's true. Yes. yes. It's true yeah, because it's true. I, in people that grew up in my time- Yeah. As, you back know, in my day. Back in my <laughs> days. Um, yeah, the, the old, an older school. They just have different mentality. And they do see, you know, I where what I'm doing right now with the company that I'm still at part-time, it's HR. Yeah. And a lot of that is the people that are from a different generation. Yeah. They say it. They're like, oh, everybody's so sensitive. Well, no. People are aware. And if they don't like the way they're being treated, they're going to say something. Yeah. Just be respectful. Yeah. Ask yourself every day, should I say this aloud? And if you shouldn't, don't say it. Yeah. And that's, and that's <laughs> like a huge, that is a huge issue. Like it, I would get angry sometimes too, like trying, like maybe having a conversation where I felt like, come on, this person should have just like, this, this small thing was said. And then I would like, after having the conversation over in my head and then talking to this person and understanding their feelings and like, it's, it's more about me. Like maybe I felt a little embarrassed that I even said that or that some, I let somebody say mm -hmm. that. Like even like, it, it, cause it can sometimes feel really dumb. You know, like how's that person getting mad? But it's like, yo, like if you know, if there's a tinge, like you said, of like, should I have said this or should I not have said that? And you lean towards, no, I shouldn't have said that. It's on you. And sometimes it's really tough for anyone to look in the mirror, you know? And that's when you get like maybe some older cats that are just like, you know, fuck this, this person's an idiot. But it's like, yo, maybe that idiot is like looking at you in the mirror. Yeah. You know, because yeah. things got to change for the positive. It's true. I, I think I, I, I hit a point in my, when I was younger. I, well, I came up like that too, being screamed at. And we grinded. We worked 
you know, eight hours on the clock and, and, and six or seven hours off the clock, right? And, and just put our heads down and work so hard and still got screamed at all day, you know? So when you come from that culture, it's like, you, you, have, you know, it's like, I'm not going to turn out like my dad, but inevitably you fucking do. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you uh-huh. do. Well, yeah. so exactly. well said. But it's like, so, you know, you're, and now you have kids who like aren't so much grinding and working off the clock. And like, I mean, you're like, if anybody should get yelled at, right. But no, they're um, actually like, can I leave right. an hour and a half early? Yeah. And you're like, no, and you're like, right. Or you say yes. And they're like, you're not going to pay me for yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but you, I, I kind of crossed the a bridge where I, I don't know when it happened, but I, I guess it's like an emotional maturity where I realized like, oh, this woman's not just a line cook. She goes home to like a uh, 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 kids yeah. and a family. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. like, you wouldn't, you wouldn't outside of here, you wouldn't speak to someone. You wouldn't speak to a, you start to respect people as individuals, right? Like she's raising a family and she's got a husband and, and, or, vice versa. or this guy's going home to, you know, he's got a family he's, he's supporting. And outside of these four walls, he has a, actually has a life. Like you yeah. don't speak to someone like that on the street. Like you can't. And then I'm also like an empath. So like I'm getting emotional just the talking biggest. about that. Like the fact that I would speak to someone maybe, um, that way in the past, like, it's like it's absurd. And I would never do that. I wouldn't, you know, I don't like even that energy around me. Anymore. Yeah. Well, I had it for so long as a woman just yeah. working. I had to experience that. And the narrative of you should be thankful that you're giving this opportunity in a male dominated environment was very like grind into me. Like, well, no, well, come on. That's just how it is. Liz, come on. And, and for a very long time, I did feel like, okay, this is, this is what it is. And yeah. like you said, you laugh it off yeah, because you don't have any other options. And then I was very fortunate to work with someone who was very respectful of me and my opinions. Mm-hmm. And it kind of set the path to really change my boundaries yeah. of what I tolerated and what I didn't. Yeah. And one of the reasons why I went into business with Michael and why I decided was because I saw that he, I came in and I started working with him and I saw how well liked and respected he was in the kitchen. Yeah. And that was something that I hadn't experienced before. And not just as a Latina woman who's very close to the back of the house always. Um, I, I saw there was no difference that he treated the women very well as well as the men and very patient. And I, you know, I've always wanted to do something. something. (laughs) Well, it doesn't mean that you are not frustrated inside in situations because I've seen that, but he, the way that he communicates with the pe- with the staff and the people, which made me feel like, okay, this would be a good person for me to go into business with. And because we could have differences, but he would still be respectful yeah. where I had already tried to endeavor and other stuff with other people. And it, it just never worked Yeah, because I always defaulted on, well, you're, you answer the phone, you do the paperwork, you, it was never my opinion. It was always somebody else. So I do think that changing the dynamics and being moving towards where we're moving to, it's yeah. it's beneficial. I mean, I think it brings up a lot of opportunity and talent that otherwise you wouldn't have ever seen yeah. in hospitality. Like you said, respect and patience, like just key pillars in life. And if, if you're working for somebody that doesn't have those things, then they can probably, they'll be, they'll be calling you. The HR department. Yeah. <laughs> you know? But no. this was that industry. This was the known industry for that, right? Yeah. Like everybody was, it was allowed. So much was allowed. So yeah, good. and you kind of get it beat into you, you know? Like I would talk to some of the female employees I've had through the years and they're like, oh no, he's just joking or no, he's just being funny. And it's like, yo, like you can be honest. Like it's not, like I didn't think it was that funny. Yeah. Like, but it's like, no, it's like, I don't want him to get in trouble. And it's like, it's almost like, it's it's like we it's be, it's like abuse. It's fucked up. It really is. Yeah, it is abuse. Yeah, but you know yeah. the balls it took for me to partner with a director of human resources. <laughs> That's a good move, yeah. dude. That's a good move, <laughs> dude. I start I, I when I, I I started calling HR for everything. You know, like and a lot of people don't even know. You know, dude, what I mean, people like call her all the time. Like, 
when, when we in situations like this, for example, where we're just getting to know people and they're like, what did she do? Or I'll get a call like, hey, what, did you say your partner was the director of human resources? I'm like, yeah. Can, Can I get her get number? A hundred percent all the time. Yeah. All the time it happens. Yeah. It, yeah. yeah. It's because like a lot of people don't understand that like you can, like what you guys are doing is, is beautiful. It's just you two. I mean, it's a lot of fucking work and you're dealing with food and you're dealing with customers. You know, once you're dealing with the whole squad, with the, with the team, that's where like, I think a lot of people f start failing because people, you, anyone can make food. I do yeah. believe that anyone can make food, but not everyone can be a leader. And not everyone can be a good, a, a good employer. Yeah. Employer. And you either have to, you either have to know that right away and know that you're going to hire that out when you get there, or this isn't the business for you because it's hospitality. And yes, we're serving the public, but look, we're obviously here to serve our teams. That's who's number one here. I don't get, we had some asshole come in yesterday. And I knew the minute I read the fucking Yelp review, it had nothing to do with my team because I trust my team. And even if they had been an asshole, I don't give a shit because they're still the team. They're the, <laughs> they come first, you know? And I, I just, I think we're talking about something really important because I think these things are heavily missed. These things are still going on in this, this industry too. Like, I know friends that still work at restaurants like this. The culture where I work, it's not the same because there are very my position is very integrated with the management team yeah and they do fall back into asking over asking but i think that that's okay because everybody's learning yeah but i do agree i've said it multiple times yeah when there's reviews and when there's things well let's look at the bigger picture yeah has this person have a history of behavior like this yeah what happened and i do think that it's very easy to default into you're in trouble why did you do this but i do think that defending your team like you said that's the team yeah that's the people that are gonna be there when you when you're okay and when you're not okay yeah and you have to really honor that yeah and if some if any of them ever feel uncomfortable you have to really go to bat for them yeah and i think people do have a good sense of knowing when something it's real and something versus when somebody's just making something up. And Yelp is the worst. Yes. How do you feel about Yelp? I feel like it can be a, it can be a tool to generate uh, more, uh, more business if, when used correctly. Uh, I am trying my best. I think it's like this like dojo for my mental health though, where I, I need to like learn how to fight a negative review because I just want to get to a place where I could get 15 one stars in one day and just it not fucking bother me at all, oh, you know? Yeah. Well, you can get 15 four stars in one day and you wouldn't even... Yeah, you know, but like, like, your blood pressure I doesn't move I at know, all, right? I know. Get, that, I mean, that, and that's, that's, the, that's the, the human condition. We always concentrate on the negative. Um, but I do think it can be a tool for good. And for the most part, I do believe it. it is. And, and I'd be... I, I would be lying if I said I, I don't use it. Like I was just in Spokane visiting my folks in Washington and my wife always, we got on there and like, you know, you're, we're, we don't really read reviews, but you kind of just check out. Like if somebody has a three star review, there's usually, there's usually some, yeah, it's a, there's, it's a some, trend. there's, <laughs> there's something going on there at the same time. It's gotta be taken with a grain of salt. I think if you give a shit about your establishment, if you care about your team, if you care about the neighborhood that you get to serve, your Yelp, your Yelp page is going to be just fine. You're not going to have mm -hmm. any issues. And, and that's the truth. If you don't give a shit about any of those things or one of those things, you might struggle somewhere. It's a force that could be used for good or evil. Yes, exactly. <laughs> well, you have the opportunity to use it as a tool, right? It's like the modern day comment card. Yeah. It's like you go through and you, if you see, you know. 15 one-star reviews it says the hostess was a bitch the hostess is probably a bitch that's 100 percent. You, know, you know what that's i mean 100%. like rather than some one-off where they waited no, and that's why i said you look at it for you got to be able to look at it with objectivity and yeah. say do i have a pattern do i not have a pattern is this a one-off yeah which you could also harp on it's hard it's hard to like he's he, like you guys said you see four four stars, five, five stars. And you guys are like, Oh, that's great. You see one negative one. And it kind of like eats at you. Yeah. It's cause I care. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. But it's, 
But I do think that you have to look at, was it the food? But some people, just, like you said, some people are just not going to like. That's usually what it is. There's always people that you cannot please. That's just, and that's, mm -hmm. and I just need to be okay with that. Like, all right. Or somebody just not going to, they're going to buy something. And then they're going to complain about the price. And it's like, whose fucking fault is that? Well, you're right. Yours. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Like, if you don't like good food, that is good, right. not going to make you feel like shit. Little Caesars is down the street. <laughs> Be my guest. And I'm not knocking on Little Caesars. I never will. Shit is fire. Sure. But a $5.99 hot and ready is going to make you shit your pants <laughs> in comparison to a slice from Hot Tongue. Right. You know? Let's get back to uh, the, the shop, though. So oh, yeah. The... Did you uh, intentionally pick that baby blue? Yes. Because I really, I, was, I saw that oven and I was like, mm, that's. Did you? That's nice. I'm I so didn't glad. even say cute because baby blue is a cute color. Could I was like, be, right? that's sexy. That's smooth. Nice. Yeah. We like that. Who picked so that tile, Michael? We, 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 we disagree on who picked it. <laughs> okay. I picked it. <laughs> Liz thinks she picked it. So we went and we met with these guys at Forno Stanzi and Martin and Esmeralda, fantastic people. Um, very talented oven builder. And they gave us their catalog of like the usual suspects of tiles. Mm -hmm. And we were both like, just, we're not, we wanted something a little unique and we just weren't into it. You know, like we didn't want like brick or, you know, an Italian mosaic or any of that. We wanted something kind of unique to us. We weren't sure what that was. And we went to, so we're like, oh, we'll go to some tile stores. And then quickly realized like how fucking expensive tile is. We were like, holy shit. Yeah. Um, they gave us a very narrow parameter. <laughs> yeah. They were like, well, don't go over $10 a square. You can, you can have whatever you want, but don't go over $10 a square foot. And everything we liked was like $30 a square foot or whatever. Yeah. So, or more. Um, so we just went online and we found pool tile. Sick. That's even tighter. And we were wow. like, wow. Yeah. We were like, this looks it. great, but we didn't know. We're like, it looks great online. Fucking fingers crossed. You know what I mean? And um, so we, we sent them the link. They got the tile. We fucking loved it. Not only did we love it, they were building our oven like right at the opening of this garage where he builds the ovens. Yeah. And he was saying like, everybody that comes in here is like, I want that tile. I want that tile. So they're now using that company to source their tile. And we've asked them. That's I don't right. know if they, I was like, please don't sell that tile to anybody. Can we just like take that one out of rotation? <laughs> you know what I mean? Retire the, yeah, retire the uh, what's it called? Isla Mirada Blue. Seafoam. Retire the seafoam. Um, but I think that's why it's so shiny too, because it's pool tile. That's tight. That's a tight. Yeah, aspect. we're really happy with it. Yeah. Now, now we, now we've we have picnic tables. We painted them baby blue. Now it's it's baby blue has become like the the thing. That's kind cool. Of, that's like cool. Our, so it's also something you don't see all the time. Yeah, I mean, we I love the color, and uh, it happened so organically. It wasn't like, oh, we're gonna be baby we're, blues. We gonna are be. the baby blues. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. But yeah, we yeah we get a lot of compliments on it. Thank you. I'm, I'm, yeah. Um, we didn't, I didn't expect that, but we do. So does the oven just stay in the garden? It, so the plan was, yes, short answer, yes, it stays in the garden because it was so difficult to get in there. Yeah. Um, to maneuver around the... All the garden stuff. Yeah, the garden yeah, stuff, the and beams and posts and yeah. all that stuff. And uh, so we were going to... So now, of course, as soon as we get in the garden, people are like, hey, can you... As soon as we started posting pictures of it, people are like, oh, you should come do this event. Can you come and do this? And we're like, we're, we're hoping we're busy enough that we don't need to move, move it okay. because it's a pain in the ass to get in and out of there. Um, I had some buddies of mine come that were like big guys who they, they train at Gold's Gym, which is around the corner. Hell yeah. Um, Muscle Beach. Yeah. So I was like, oh, these guys are like super strong and um, they can come help us push it into. And the one dude was like, bro, you undersold this. Like, I thought we were just like pushing a. I'll give you a free pizza. Yeah, totally, totally. I got you, my boy. They're like, yeah, we got you. We got you. We came. It was like an hours later. They were like, bro, what the fuck? They're like, you, you definitely undersold nice. this. Nice. I was like, oh, man. Well, it was like raining. The ground was wet. It was a fucking, it was a disaster. It's heavy. So, but, and we could get it out if we wanted to. But I, uh, well, the, the plan is, our plan initially was, let's go to dispensaries. Because we were like, I talked to a couple guys I know that, that own and operate dispensaries. And we were like, well, if people are going to smoke weed. They're obviously they're going to get hungry. So if they could order a pizza on their way in, pick up their weed and then come out and get a. Have their pizza ready. That, that was our plan. That was like our. Yeah, I talked to buddies of mine who have who operate dispensaries and they were like, can't believe like no one does that. They're like you would kill. They were saying like. On special days or grand openings, they'll bring in food trucks. They're like in the line for the food is like down the fucking road. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, of course it is. So that was our 
if all else fails, we'll just go to dispensaries, but then we wind up in the garden, which I think is more on line with our brand. Yeah. Currently. That's, I mean, it's, it sounds awesome. Yeah, it is. So when, okay. when, when are you serving pizza? And we're, we're planning, um, I mean, the idea is to be able to get eventually five days a week, lunch and dinner. Um, but right now we're going to start Thursday through Sunday and we're going to do like a four to nine ish. Again, we don't really have a plan. So that's how we're planning. We'll start. I think in Los Angeles, like the garden vibe, like the outdoor air kitchen, like the story. People love all of these things. I fucking hope so. I think. <laughs> I are hope you guys so gonna? Too. Are you gonna do some PR? Yeah. 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 We 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 we, we haven't. Uh, we don't. We have no money. Like less than no money. Um, well, you can sell your blood. So we. Or plasma. <laughs> uh, but thankfully, we talked we, about this on another pod. We we, we thank. Cheese and eggs. <laughs> Oh man, I could. Still, yeah, anyway, um, thankfully we we've 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 made some good friends that we've worked with throughout the years that are kind of donating their time. Not kind of. They, they are. are. They're PR helping us a ton. Just, yeah. They're, they're really rooting for. I've never felt so supported before. Like people are re really feel people rooting for us. Like That's we have great. some friends in in PR. One specifically. Um, I would love to shout out her name, but she's working for another company currently. Uh, but she charges them. What's that? <laughs> she charges that company. Right. Yeah, they pay her. Well, that. shout out you. <laughs> yeah, you know who we're you talking who you about. Are. You know who you are. Um, but uh, she's been fantastic in helping us, like coordinate media content, connecting us with media, um, and like all sorts of stuff. So well, that's good. I think I feel like it's gonna be like an easy sell because I'm just imagining like. The secret garden, the baby blue oven, I, you smell the... You do you smell do PR? The, <laughs> you should. Uh, <laughs> you Would you donate your time <laughs> to do our PR? You got it, dude. I got plenty of time, you know? Look, right. I'll tell you. I, not I, like I'm making my own fucking cheese. <laughs> <laughs> my mom is my biggest critic. I love her, but she's the one person that would tell me, what are you doing? Yeah. Well, she did. Stop. She and like, she what did. What are you doing? When I told her... Well, I'm going to quit my day job. And she was like, absolutely not. Yeah. And, you know, I was like, I have to do this. You have to allow me to do this. Like, yeah. I, I'm so old, but you still have to let me do this. I need and your blessing. I did. I wanted her to be supportive. Of course, of course. And the whole time she was like, I don't know. This is too risky. And we had a photo shoot. And she came to the garden and saw the oven in the garden. And she immediately flip her script. She yeah. was like, this is beautiful. This is magic. Yeah. And I think this is going to be something special. That's awesome. Which made me feel so much better. Yeah, of course. You want that validation. Yeah, me too. Yeah. yeah. But I think you're right. I think that there's like a little niche for, you well, know. There are, there, if there's anything I've learned doing this podcast, the power of a story sometimes can trump maybe even the quality of food. And I'm not saying that that's the case here, but I do, in Los Angeles, I think it is important to have like a rich story, how you got started and like, what's the appeal of getting there? So many people now are making pizza. You know what I mean? Yeah. Is it, Everybody. was it that you started out in like baking pizzas in your house and like now you're in a brick and mortar or is it like, you know, you started with a, a pizza trailer and you've done parties for, you know, the weekend and blah, blah. And you've spent four years trying to get in brick and mortar or is it, are you cooking in a secret garden where the birds talk to you? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> chickens, chickens and rabbits. Chickens, chickens and, and rabbits. rabbits. Just, just free range chickens. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's interesting and you're right. And everyone says to us, you know, what you, you have to craft your story and how important it is to, to, to create your story. Um, and this is the, the first time where like, we didn't need a team of people sitting around a table brainstorming about it happened so organically. And the story is the story. It's not like, well, yeah, know, and it's well, what's authentic. Our angle it's not, it's, I'm not, I'm not saying go everyone go out and like make up a fucking story because you can't. Well, people you, do. Yeah, you, well, it's yeah, not authentic. yeah, and usually you can see through that. It's just, it's, it's a little bit more magical. Like I, I love the full package. You know, I, I, I say I wouldn't, I've, I wouldn't have built out this restaurant if I didn't care about every single fucking aspect. It, clearly, of, down to the pizza, to you know. Uh, the t-shirts or like what's on the wall you know it's a it's a whole thing and i think that's what that's what somebody gets with with what you're you're curating i mean i imagine a garden in venice and then 
your, like pizzas being made outside. There's to me, there's nothing more romantic. I'm a pizza person, so there's right. nothing more romantic than cooking under the stars, you know, and being outside and being with friends, and you know, that's that's magic to me. And so I'm sure it feels, your mom's right. Well, we're hoping that you're the voice of the city. And yeah. <laughs> that, uh, that other people feel that way, but it is to will. us too. It is to us too. It's very, it's it is. It feels magical. It you does. Know, like, There's like definitely good energy around there. Yeah. It's, Until we did that photo shoot, we did. We, did, I had the, I had like fifteen things on the menu, and we did one photo shoot for our social media. And halfway into the shoot, I'm like, five of these fucking things are coming off that's the menu. That's great, though. That's you know what good. I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, no yeah, fucking yeah, way we're doing yeah, an eggplant yeah, sandwich. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, well, that's fucking... insanity, dude. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, yeah. That is insanity. Well, so this will be kind of a warm up, the first event. And then when, yeah. you, when you do like an industry or friends and family, is that kind of like a, is that also to kind of be working out some kinks? Or? Yeah, it's to work out kinks and, you know, more for us to kind of celebrate with friends yeah. and, and, you know, obviously let people know, you know, get to get the word out, you know, hopefully everybody posts on their social media. But I mean, it's more of a because it's not the style of service. We're going to just put food out on the table and we just want everybody to have fun. And yeah, it's kind of like our last hurrah. Like, here you go. Here's a a bucket of beer on ice. We have um, Caroline from Best Coast Beverages is, is coming and donating a bunch of her, her awesome wines, canned wines, uh, rosé specifically. So mm. um, just just to have fun with people that may not be able to make it down otherwise like yourself who's busy you know in your shop every day you know come down for a night and just enjoy it and have fun and see what we're doing and let us share it with people that we care about and respect and to yeah. be able to give some some of the people that are supporting us an idea of what we're doing of course because it's you say it and like you're what you're what you're imagining is what we want everybody to imagine yeah but then there's people that can't grasp they're like wait what but is there a restaurant in the in yeah. the garden? Like what? In the oh, you got to tell people. I'm like, you know what a food truck is? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, step below that, <laughs> right? Like, there's, there's no walls. There's no, no truck. Like, yeah, we're just out there with some <laughs> tables yeah. and an open fire. Right. Yeah. That's it. They're yeah. Like, what? You don't have heat what are you guys doing? You know, like, so it it really no is restroom to we give. Have a yeah, nice. it is really to give people an idea of what it is, and they in. Yeah, to work out kinks and to be able to. I also want to know how many people we could really have in there. <laughs> just that you can have in there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, just like sitting down and and, but it's more to celebrate something that feels big. Big. Yeah, we hope. I mean, we didn't plan on. We didn't plan on having tables. Now we have like five picnic tables. You know what I mean? Like it all just kind of happened. Like one thing it after more. The one yeah. thing after the other and it's like Evolves. well we're in the garden they had picnic tables and we you know we just painted them two days ago baby blue um so yeah it did more so we're kind of we're figuring it out as we go and we want to we, we are really letting destiny and and the universe uh, so i mean hey jesus take the wheel baby. You know what I'm saying? sometimes or anybody yeah yeah <laughs> let go and let whatever let god go, you know right. uh, That's right. just it take really the wheel is. Yeah. It really is. Well, you know, that's what you have to do. That's what an entrepreneur does. And that's what a lot of people don't understand is that a lot of it is just jumping off the cliff. And you don't know how you're going to land, but you're going to land hopefully in one piece. And if you yeah. don't, you pick yourself back up and you fucking you keep going. And uh, there's always going to be, there's a lot of risk in what you guys are doing. But I think it's going to be fantastic. I heard an entrepreneur say recently that the most important thing any successful company has ever done is launch, right? Like even Apple, if they never launched, there would be no Apple. Of course. So that's like the most important thing you can do. So the first step. To jump yeah. off the cliff, like yeah. you said. And then all it is is just getting out of bed every day, which a lot of people <laughs> The hardest have, part. Yeah, which is also <laughs> the hardest part. People have, a lo people have a hard time with that, you know? Yeah. Um, is, there like a, is there like a restaurant group or a, like a, another company that you have? Oh, uh, First Green? Yeah. We, we, first, we, we, our umbrella company that Liz and I started initially was for, is First Green Hospitality. Yeah. Um, do you want to talk about that? Yeah. I mean, we do, we do, we do events, we do catering, we do, uh, I'm currently doing a lot of consulting. consulting. Yeah. Um, a lot, which is like, that's how it goes, right? For like the, a year, I was like, couldn't, couldn't get consulting work. And then as we start this business, it's like coming out of, of course, out of nowhere. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm on my way to San Francisco today. Um, for work to work and it's like 
it's, you know, it's, I complain that I'm too busy and it's like, these are the days that I prayed for when I wasn't so busy. You know, of I'm never happy. I mean, you know, I'm not busy enough. Or I'm too right. busy. I can just never like accept it and say, you know, these are good times, um, which, which they are. So yeah, first green is something we keep, uh, we keep going. We, we, yeah, I mean, I do people reach out for consulting with HR, she does HR and, consulting and, now, and yeah. it was a way to be able to. Well, if anyone listening here needs some HR help, should they reach out? <laughs> sure, absolutely. Where, of where do they reach out? Um, Liz G at first green hospitality dot com. Um, OK, or what's, what's an easy Instagram? Fiorelli Pizza. Uh, Oh, yeah. Just yeah, he what, could DM you me. Want, you want them DM, DM you there for, I mean, uh, for I HR issues? Well, oh, no, no, yeah, don't, 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 don't send your HR issues. First green hospitality. Don't send your HR issues to the DMs. No, but if they want my, 3, my phone. 3,000 DMs later. But if anyone needs my phone number, yeah, they could absolutely. Yeah, 631. Okay. No. <laughs> Do you know Doug Ellen? Yeah. Uh, yeah. We, Huge he, supporter of ours. He, well, I saw. I, I, he loves this place. He well, he came in recently because of uh, Lowell Caesars. David, uh, he knows Turkel, and it was really nice. But I was when I when I do research, I was like stalking you on Instagram. Nice, and I saw you. Uh, I saw you on Entourage, dude. Oh no way! Right? <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. You were in the back yeah. there, dude. Uh, I, it's funny. I didn't know Doug then. Um, but I know him well now. He just he's a big supporter. He came and it's great. we sold some cookies a couple of weeks ago to raise money. He came and bought a few dozen cookies and posted it all over his Instagram. But dude, I, I swear this is I'm an entourage fanatic. Fanatic. And when I came to LA, uh, I think part of the reason I moved here, I was living in South Florida at the time, was like, because I watched Entourage and I was like, LA is so fucking cool. Like, I want to be in that city. Like, I don't know why. I was just like crazy about that. It's a great show, crazy about the show, but I was working at the Sofitel Hotel and like I had been here for like a month and they were like, hey, we're shutting down the restaurant tomorrow. Um, we're going to do some filming here. And I was like, oh, no shit. What are we filming? And they're like, ah, some show about an entourage or something. And I was like, shut the fuck up. And I thought they were fucking with me because I liked the show that much. Yeah. I thought everybody was fucking with me. And uh, they were like, no, we're filming a show, a show called Entourage. Do you know what it is? I'm like, get the fuck. Like, who put you? I thought I was being punked. So we did. We filmed a, an episode of Entourage, Turtle's birthday episode. Um, great, <laughs> yeah. great episode. So, so uh, they, they, I went over to the table. It was, it was the whole cast of Entourage, Jamie Lynn Siegler, all the guys. I was like, I'm, they're like, you can't do that. I'm like, I'm fucking doing it. I don't care. Like this is, so I went over to the table. I introduced myself. I'm like, I'm from Long Island. A lot of those guys are from Long Island. I had, a, you know, uh, anyway. Fangirling. What's that? I was fangirling for sure. I introduced myself. And then they, somebody came over and was like, dude, you really love this show, huh? I was like, I love it. I love it. And he's like, you want to be in a scene? You want to be in a, in a, in a, I was like, oh my God, oh my God, are you serious? I was like, what would I do? What would I do? And they, they, we had sent the whole, we had called the whole staff off and they had extras in the kitchen, but I was there just because to help them with anything they needed. Yeah. Um, so he's like, I don't know, do what you would normally do. Go back there, like make a pizza or something. And I was like, okay. It's like the guys are going to walk into the restaurant to the table. And when they pan across, you'll be in the, yeah, in the yeah. background. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. I was like, oh, my God. I'm like pacing. I'm like, this is my moment. This is my moment. Fuck it. <laughs> this is my glow up yeah, moment. Yeah, yeah, yes, fuck yes. the kitchen. Dude, I'm, I'm about my, to be on entourage. My friends are going to freak. Well, the, 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 uh, the, I mean, it was such a, um, uh, Adrian Grenier and Kevin Connolly had been at a beach club in Quag on Long Island the week before. And, Grenier's, Adrian Grenier's mother was like drowning. And my childhood best friend, Sean, was the lifeguard and like pulled her out of the water. So I was like, dude, my buddy saved your mom's life last week. <laughs> and they were like, no way. Oh my God. Like, Victory. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> yes. So anyway, they, they, they film it. And this is my big scene. And like, they're fucking, the guys are walking in the restaurant. And I'm like, I can't believe I'm doing this. And I hear, cut. And I'm like, and this guy's walking over. And I'm like, he's walking over to me. And he walks over to me. He's like, hey, man. If you want to do this, we're going to do this one more time. The next time we do it, try not to look up like you're watching a bunch of fucking movie stars walk into the room. And I was like, fuck, like my big shot. We did it again. And then I told everybody I was going to be on Entourage. I told them what episode it was going to be. I'm like, Jerry Ferrara is wearing a baby blue sweater and a blue and a baby blue Kangol. So when you see that episode, that's, that's the me. one I'm in. Um, that's why and, things are baby blue. 
<laughs> yes. Oh, oh, don't get him started. He would go down that. This is the episode I never got my good at. Dude, I had like a Super Bowl party. I was like, I told everybody I knew I'm going to be on this episode of Entourage. We're going to fucking watch it. <laughs> I see the scene. The guys are in the bar. They're talking about drama paying for Turtles College. And they're all fucking, I still remember it. They're, they're sitting in the bar and they're walking from the bar into the restaurant. I'm like, this is my fucking big scene. <laughs> and they're walking and they walk out of the bar and they cut right to the table. And they cut. And I was like, dude, I was rewinding. I was like, oh my like, God. No way, guys. No I way. was so wait, embarrassed. Wait, wait, wait. I was like, God. yeah. And then years later, I was watching that episode, like a couple of years ago. This is like 15 years later. I was watching the episode. Um, <laughs> You just your sad, coat in so, the back. so sad. I'm so sad. No, and I saw my head in the background. I was like, oh my yeah, God, yeah. I fucking made There's it. There's my head. Yeah, yeah. And I, fucking, I yeah. was in that episode, I motherfuckers. Was. You get on Facebook, motherfuckers, it was. Yeah, I was. Right. Check it out. For all my of you that doubted me. My high school reunion page. Doubted me. Yeah. I was on that episode. No, he's really intense about it. I don't, I like, I like the show enough, but. I loved that show. I've I've meant, mean to gone back or gone and rewatch it. I, I heard it hasn't aged well, but uh, no. Well, I, mean, I, <laughs> but, I, I, but I bet it'd still be pretty fucking funny to me. So oh, hysterical! I mean, it's yeah. very like you know you can't speak the way you. Yes. Well, you can't do anything like yeah, they yeah, did that, in the yeah. show well, anymore. Yeah. As the, Doug said Doug has a podcast, and when I listen to it, he says that's how people spoke back then. Of course. So that's we weren't. That show was a like, hit. I don't speak like that. Yeah. But, you know, it, the show was a hit. I mean, oh. like. It wouldn't have been that popular if it, you couldn't have done those things back then. So they're making a new show, with, Entourage like, with uh, the, the Kevin Connolly, Kevin Dillon, Doug Ellen, uh, Charlie Sheen, called like it's called Ramble On, and it's about it, it's what do you call it when they when they, they play themselves, yeah, what, dramatized versions of themselves. So it's about like Kevin Connolly now owning like Action Park Media and Charlie Sheen trying to get back into Hollywood and whatever Ke Kevin I can I they haven't sold it yet, but I cannot fucking wait. Love it. Yeah. Well, let me ask you one more question. Uh-oh. <laughs> Who's, we both have to answer this question. Who is the greatest artist or band of all time? Top three. Top. Michael Jackson. Okay. Stevie Wonder. Prince. And then out of those three, which one? Today. Doesn't it? Just what are you feeling today? If I had to get in my you car and listen to something, Stevie yeah. Wonder. All right. Yeah. Well, mine is difficult because I grew up in a predominantly Spanish speaking home. So I grew up listening to almost only Spanish music. Some Luis Miguel? So no, Vicente Fernandez. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Is that what you're going with? A hundred percent. Wait, who? Yeah. Vicente Fernandez. We'll have to play him on the way back. All right, P, right? All right, P. Oh he, shit. Yeah. He uh not too long ago, a couple of years ago. Yeah. Yeah. He was a uh, polarizing character. Really? Yes. I didn't know this. Dude. He's very on. famous. So he's very yeah. famous. Dude. You should go put some on. <laughs> he slaps. Yeah, he slaps. I mean, it's. <laughs> he slaps. You want to cry. Yeah. <laughs> put yeah. that on. All right. Where do we go to get in contact with y'all? I mean, we already got the HR situation sorted, <laughs> but, uh, you know. <laughs> Where we go to see you, where we go to eat your pizza, when when does it all drop? What's going on? Uh, we're dropping the weekend of the 29th, it's Friday the 29th of March. And you can follow our progress or get in touch with us at Fiorelli Pizza on Instagram. Go time. Cannot wait. Thank you so much for doing this. Thank Three you so Thank much you for, for having us. Thanks for time. having us. Yeah. It's awesome. This place is awesome. Thank you. I want to go. I want to go down.